Digestion starts in the mouth in several ways. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. So we're going to talk about digestion all this month and the very beginning of digestion starts in the mouth. We start to break down sugar. We start to absorb that sugar. We have taste. The entire sense of taste actually triggers the stomach to, to warn or tell the stomach what's coming. It starts to um, tailor make the enzyme juices that are going to be needed to break down the food. Um, we chew our food, uh, unless we don't, but we should be chewing our food. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and, and that chewing process helps to break down the food. So there's a lot of factors that go that, that already happen and influence digestion right from the beginning, okay? And so let's look at this from a standpoint of, you know, the very beginning of digestion starts in the mouth. Soon as actually, in a way, it starts even before the mouth. As I'm bringing my fork up to my mouth, I start to smell. The sense of smell is so important for, again, letting us know what the food is, whether it's rancid, we'll know right away whether the food is rancid. We we'll actually even kind of get a sense of whether this food is really good for my physiology. I'm already starting to tune physiologically to my food uh, right away in the sense of smell. Now here is why, this is why if you've watched me along the way here, I've told you we've got to absolutely must get rid of synthetic fragrances because it's going to gum up and block and distort all the stuff that's happening up here, which is so critical for you to be able to know what is good for your body and what's not. You will not be in tune with your body, you will not be in touch with what's going on if all this is being junked up on a constant daily basis with these synthetic fragrance junk that coats and, and irritates and then and on top of it uh, distorts the signals, the smell signals that are coming in. Very, very important for digestion and for our, our whole body awareness. Okay, we, in order for us to get really tuned to our food, we're going to have to have the sense of smell and sense of taste to be highly honed. Most of the time, I mean, modern industrial food is high fat, high salt, high sugar, because it hides the fact that all those, all those are dominant tastes and it hides the fact that everything's underneath is rancid, you know, or empty. Okay, so we have these empty calories, uh, and the body will know that. You just you know that there's no real substance in there. Okay, we would know that. And and for me, in the first, I mean, even before it hits my mouth, if it's rancid, I could I know. I mean, instantly, I know. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, I might just given on the depending on the situation. If I'm in a, situ, uh, uh, you know, a social circumstance where I need to be polite, I'm I may or may not. You know, I might actually put it in my mouth. I won't spit it out, but if I end up putting it in my mouth, I'll go ahead and swallow. Unless I unless I find out that there's MSG or something like that, in which case I will take it out. So what I'm saying is that whole process of you getting familiar with your food and your physiology starts right away in the very, very upper digestion, right in the mouth, okay? So that's uh, the the... It's so important to to start to get in touch with our food in that kind of context. If you're trying to lose weight, you're going to have to learn to. Oh, if you're trying to be healthy and well in general, okay. And obviously, weight loss would be would be something along those you know consistent with that. It is to really get to know your food, really smell it, really taste it. Now, part two of tasting your food one is stop junking up our our our, our sniffer. Part two of really tasting our food is to, to really chew. They talk about 20 chews uh, of the food before swallowing. I guarantee that if you commit to taking 20 chews before you swallow and count it, one, two, three, you will uh, start to pay attention to what at what things taste like because you're gonna if it's gonna sit that long in your mouth you're just gonna finally register in there and most of the time you'll find out that what's hiding underneath the salt and fat after that flavor fades away is rancid okay it's stale it's rancid um, and and almost all the food that we eat is that way it's packaged you know and, and no good so I mean I mean you say no good it's obviously keeping us alive, but that's really the bare minimum of of what our food is doing in the in this modern industrial food uh, type of industry. Um, is is it's just barely keeping us alive. It, it's not really helping us be well. It's not this food that is flooding the body with nutrients and and and, and that we share and participate and and become aware of the vitality of the planet through our food that we become aware of the providence of God, how much God loves us and takes care of us.
through our food, if we're eating junk, uh, and and it's just, and the body is is constantly getting this message, you know, on the underlying, it tastes good on the front side, but we know that's fake, and and then the real message is okay, really nothing good coming out of the earth. Well, do you think you're going to respect the earth? Do you think you're going to respect the environment? You're going to think we're going to respect. See, what I'm saying is. This is why I talk about this wellness being a, an overall global package here, that it's not just about me being well in my body, uh, but it's really the, me doing my part to be well for, with the whole planet. And, and so eating good food and knowing what good food feels like, I mean, the more fresh and good and wholesome food we eat, we buy, uh, if we're buying it and if we're growing it fine, but, but if we're buying fresh, wholesome, organic food, then they make more of it. Right? Do, do you see how that works? I mean, it's we're voting with our dollar. So, okay, I digress a little bit on that. But the chewing becomes that opportunity to break down, literally start physically breaking down that food. And of course, in that chewing process, the, the, the saliva is mixing with that food, starting to dissolve out the sugars. And we start absorbing sugar right away and other nutrients, but mainly sugar in the, and we start breaking that down. There's an enzyme called tylen that's in the, uh, the saliva and we start breaking all that down. Now, um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about what happens next. So we're going to swallow and it goes down to the stomach and we'll, we'll work with the, the entire system you know, later on. But right now I just want to work with um, getting an overview here and getting an understanding of how important it is to start off our digestion correctly up here in the mouth. But, but let's, let's go, uh, we'll go more in detail later, but the, so what happens is, is we've got this tube. I mentioned that yesterday. We've got this tube that is a, a single open tube that goes all the way through the center of the body, okay? That, anything that's inside the tube, when we eat that food, it's still inside the tube. The job of the digestive system is to break down and assimilate and absorb into the body, you're right through the tube, through the wall of the tube, into the body, the nutrients that we want, and protect the body, ignore and wash out and wash through the things that are not good for the body. Okay, and sometimes we can do that fairly well, but sometimes we can't. And a lot of the the chemicals and issues that we're having in our modern world are are bypassing the body's natural defense mechanisms to, and discernment mechanisms, so we really can't tell what's good and what's bad because of how, how messed up the, the whole system is, okay? So this when we start chewing our food and we swallow, it comes, you know, obviously through the, through the throat, down the esophagus, which is deep to the, to the uh, trachea, uh, and into the stomach. Now, the stomach is still a specialized form of that tube, and so it's part of the tube. We continue on through the stomach and then into the small intestine. It, we have two major accessory organs that hang off of this digestive tube, okay, the liver and the pancreas, okay, these hang off of the tube and they, they uh, squirt their juices through a, a bile duct, okay, through a duct, and those go into the tube, but the Technically, the, the, they are not part of the tube. They're accessory organs. Of course, they're vital accessory organs, but they're still accessory organs to the tube. If we continue on down that tube, we go through all the whole uh, small intestine. Then we get down to the point where the small intestine meets the large intestine, and we have the ileocecal valve, right, the, the, between the ileum. The, the, the small intestine is broken between three parts, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. And then uh, the ileum then goes into the colon, uh, which you call the cecum is the first part of the colon. Then we go into the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum, and we're out the anus. Okay, so this one other accessory uh, organ is the appendix, sits right there off of the uh, the place where the um, ileocecal valve is, and I, I I follow this 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 idea that that the Appendix is not a useless organ designed to help, uh, uh, or, you know, general surgeons, you know, get get the new car. It's um, uh, no offense to general surgeons. What I'm saying is, it, it it seems to be an easy thing. Okay, we don't really need it. We take it out. You know that type of thing. Um, the it's not it's not uh, useless. It actually produces a juice, uh, you know, a, a, a secretion that keeps the. Uh, ileocecal valve area uh, uh, clean because that's if if that valve is uh, irritated 
it, it can leak and then fecal material, the, the you know, stuff from the large intestine, leaks backward into the small intestine. And we definitely don't want that because the flora and bacteria and stuff that's going on in the large intestine is very different than something that's going on in the small intestine. Okay, so anyway, so that's the basics. I'm going to show you a diagram of that. Uh, and, and we'll go through this, uh, but I, I wanted to have you really understand that we're starting off with the tube in the mouth and the digestion starts off there. So I'm going to do just a couple breaths right now. And like I said, we're going to get a lot more into it. We're going to get to know the digestive system. Okay. Very important and very exciting because it's a lot of, it's a lot of action happening in our, in our lives around food and digestion and absorption. And so this is a very, very important and a lot of things can go wrong and, and a lot of things can get derailed in our health if we're not correct on this in this area. So so there's a lot of stuff to cover this month. So I hope you're excuse me, I hope you're ready to to get going on this and I hope you've ordered the the, the stuff from Young Living that we've talked about and uh and, and we're gonna get ready to go here. So um but but we're gonna start the first few days here to get familiar with the, the digestive system. Now um I, let's do a little breathing because I want you to breathe into the mouth, which I know sounds a little bit odd because, you know, air goes into the lungs. Anytime we breathe above the lungs, into the body above the lungs, it's a little bit difficult because we're following the air and the air goes into the lungs. But so you feel the lungs go into the bloodstream. If you ever have wonder how to get up, back up to the head, you go into the blood and the blood goes back up to the head. So into the blood, follow the blood back up into the head. So I usually take three breaths if I need to. I don't uh, usually do that now, but I mean, three breaths to get up into the head. So now I'm back in the mouth. I'm using my awareness. I'm directing my awareness through the breath into the mouth, into the tongue, into the sense of smell, okay? And I wanna wash that, clean that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the scrubby bubbles into my mouth Right, and we haven't even talked about the teeth, how important teeth are, okay? But we gotta, let's, let's strengthen the teeth with the breath and feel those roots are nice and clean. Again, scrubby bubbles moving around, glow, you know, making a nice, a healthy, glowing mouth. So we can spend a moment or two, and if you really want to, uh, you know, kind of work this system, what we're gonna, what we're heading to, is a, a, a little sequence of breathing that we can do before uh, and during, and, and in the context of eating, that can really help us one tune to our food, two um, learn how to eat less and call forth all the good that's coming through the food, coming coming from the food, and um, and make better food choices. Okay, so, but breathing into the mouth. Breathing into the taste, the sense of taste, into the tongue. And getting those scrubby bubbles and clean and activated. So now, I, after one breath, once I get good at this, I can do it in one breath. Activate the tongue, sense of taste, all the rest of the stuff, and the saliva and all that in one breath. Get the mouth going. And then go and take my first bite. Okay, so it can prepare my awareness, my consciousness. This is very tedious, very tedious on the front end, but it's just like any, like you're learning a musical instrument, it's tedious to, uh, to get to, to learn the scales and learn where the notes are and, and those kinds of things. That's all tedious. There's nothing intrinsically uh, uh, valuable. You don't really enjoy it, but you just want to get better at, at doing this and playing the piano. Well, same thing in wellness in general. There's a lot of wellness skills that aren't necessarily fun to, to gain, but once we have them, they really build this wonderful foundation. So that's why I'm doing this breathing and I'm helping you with these, a lot of these different concepts that I, I, uh, I've been working with and, and, and myself working on for, for 20 years. So, um, you know, if it seems like I know what I'm doing, it's because I've been doing this for a very long time. Okay, so hang in there with it. Use your breathing, use your consciousness, and we'll get there. We're going to take one wellness one day at a time. So hang in there. This is going to be a great month. Ask your questions. I will do what I can to, to you know, maybe even hone some of this stuff, be specific with some of these things. So ask your questions. Bring me your, your questions and concerns, and we'll get going on this for March. Happy wellness. We'll see you tomorrow.